We have powerful precision genome editing tools and great single cell RNA sequencing methods, but they're kind of hard to put together. Say you want to see if certain RNA levels change when you edit in a bunch of different disease-related mutations across different cells. You can get the RNA levels from individual cells, but which cells have which mutations? A common way to determine this is to check for the presence of editing machinery. But our precision genome editing methods are generally pretty inefficient, so just because the editing machinery is there doesn't mean that the edit was actually made. And associating RNA level changes with mutation status is difficult when the cells you're calling genome edited are mostly not actually edited. So what you'd ideally like to do is just look at the places where you meant to edit and see if there's an edit there. But that requires a whole different set of enzymatic steps that are partly incompatible with measuring RNA from single cells. So we can't do it, right? Now we can with this new method out of my lab, the Steinmetz lab. So our method is called SDRSeq for single cell DNA and RNA sequencing. Exactly as it sounds, we are adding cell identifier barcodes to both DNA amplicons, like regions where you want to call mutations, and RNA targets. Quick rundown of how it works. SDRSeq uses a cool microfluidic device called the Tapestry, which is designed for single cell DNA amplicon sequencing. It encapsulates single cells in droplets with lysis buffer with proteinase K, freeing the genomic DNA from pesky proteins. The proteinase is heat inactivated, and then those cell-containing droplets are fused with other droplets containing PCR reagents and barcoding beads. Target regions of the genome are then amplified with cell barcodes attached, and then within those amplicons you can call mutations or your edits across all of your different cells. So that's for the DNA, but how do you put the R in SDRSeq? Our trick is to do an in situ reverse transcription on cells before loading them onto the tapestry adding a handle enabling cDNAs to be amplified off of the cell barcoding oligos alongside the gDNA. And this works quite well. We can capture hundreds of RNA and gDNA targets across tens of thousands of cells, and we can associate coding and non-coding variants with changes in gene expression. And there's much more in our paper out today in Nature Methods, so check it out. And we'd love to hear your questions or ideas for collaboration, and thanks for listening!